Greetings and salutations. You are listening to the Into the North podcast, where we take a look at the competitive side of the Commander format, also known as CDH. I am one of your hosts, Lyndon, aka Noobzors, and today I am joined by my co-hosts, Matt, aka Null. What's up? Reed, aka Sick Robot. How's y'all doing? And Morgan, aka Spleenface. How's it going? Uh, and in this episode, we are bringing, we're going to be covering cards that don't quite make the cut uh, or are fringe viable. Uh, and before we get into that, what have you guys been up to since the last episode? Uh, binge watching the new season of Formula One Drive to Survive. Good show. Mm, nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen the, uh, <laughs> the, the previous seasons, up. but <laughs> I mean, uh, along the uh, the binge watching train, I've been uh, watching some of the new season three of Castlevania on Netflix. Oh, dude, oh, I heard okay. this supposed to be pretty nice. good. This is news. It's really good, yeah. <laughs> dude. That that series is is uh, is sick. So yeah, I'm looking forward to to hopefully you know more seasons to come. Well, I just finished my rewatch of Altered Carbon Season 1, and then Altered Carbon 2, or Season 2 came out, and god damn, am I disappointed. <laughs> yeah. not live up to the Thanks. hype. Thanks for At saving all. me some time. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> no, okay, if you haven't seen Season 1, it's like, it's a, it's a sci-fi masterpiece. It's awesome. Absolutely watch it, but just remember that it's based off a book, and there's no sequel to that book. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Makes hey, sense. Hey, I could think of it. I could think of a TV show where uh, they actually passed the books it was based on, and then the writing quality immediately took a dive. Uh, does it start with game and end of <laughs> and end with thrones? And end with thrones. <laughs> yeah. <it's- laughs> Anyways. Okay, uh, is that is that is that all we've been doing since the last yeah, episode? This, just watching the Netflix. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, we've been jamming games, right? I think everybody, everybody's been jamming. Some games, games were jammed. Yeah. yeah, games have been jammed as always. I finally <laughs> printed out a deck that isn't Oracle. <laughs> Thank you. Proud it's, of you. It still it still has an Oracle in it, but it's not <laughs> like <Gross>. Hulk. <laughs> Well, without uh, further ado, let's jump into housekeeping. And as usual, our housekeeping is where we shout out our new patrons. Uh, So I would like to give a big shout out to Twice. Thank you, Mitch P. And to John T. Uh, And as always, you rock. (laughs) Okay, moving on. (laughs) We're not doing our spiel anymore. Uh, (laughs) New Developments uh, is next. And... uh, Morgan, you can cover this uh, this first topic on here. Yeah, so we got uh, a nice update from the uh, metagame slash data reaper project from Squirrel Mob. And it's getting up to uh, almost 500 games now, and we're getting some, uh, some real stats and some pretty interesting results. I believe the player going first is still maintaining something like a 35% win rate. It, it has dipped down, uh, though. Yeah, it's around. It's dipped down a little bit. Uh, and then... Uh, you know, Sushi Hulk is uh, keeping keeping solid at a forty percent win rate, which is uh, healthy. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, there's lots of interesting stuff, and he goes into some detail. And we're starting to get to the point where you can actually do more multivariate analyses. So this most recent one had uh, like it looked at how the seating advantage changed over the course of a game. Um, and if you're interested, uh, we'll, we'll make sure to link that and you can go and read it for yourself and, uh, submit your games if you want so they can be added to the, to the pool. And next up on the new developments, read, you can get this one. Uh, sure. So new project started up recently, um, discord server for, I believe cataloging, uh, just CDH and EDH combos in general, and I think their goal is to try to catalog like every combo that they can, which is pretty nuts. Insane goal, but yeah, it's you know, very we'll, ambitious. We'll, we'll cheer them on. Every five card combo in Magic, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> just everything, every every single combo that you can fit into a ninety nine card deck. Um, but yeah, you should go check them out. Uh, we'll we'll drop a Discord link in the description. 
Right on. So now we can get into the main topic for the episode, which is, of course, as I said, uh, cards that don't quite make the cut or are fringe viable. And so we've kind of divided these into uh, what we got here, six categories. Um, so we've got cards that are too symmetrical, combo pieces that need too many enablers, cards that the meta is too ready to deal with, combo pieces without good enough enablers, commanders that need a combo piece, and cards where the cost is too high. So we'll be breaking that, breaking the terminology uh, down a bit more as we go through the categories. But let's kick things off with cards that are too symmetrical. Now, out of all of our categories, this is the smallest. Uh, but containing it's, only I, two I, cards. I think it's got one of the most notorious cards in the format oh, on totally. it. Certainly, certainly. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's just cut to the chase here. The the, the first card we're talking about is hu- is humility, uh, and this is <laughs> this is the card that every single stacks player coming into the format has tried to make work, and even even not stacks players have tried to make this work. It's the yeah, card that it, every uh, up and coming rules or just judge has to know how it works. <laughs> oh yeah, that too. <laughs> <It's> a... Layers. <laughs> I know God yeah, the layers. So does this have any of you guys done any uh, brewing with humility? Do you want to discuss? Oh yeah, no, one hundred percent. Why why it belongs in this category and talk so, about it a bit. So first of all, um, just going over the reasons why you would want to play humility to make it clear. Um, every almost every commander deck has a creature in the command zone and is to some degree built around a creature. So <laughs> shutting off your opponent's creatures and by extension their commanders, is just, like, incredibly powerful. And it shuts them off no matter what they do, right? Like, triggered abilities, activated abilities, if they're, like, stat sticks, no matter what they do, you're stopping them from doing that thing, right? Oh, yeah? You sure? <laughs> oh, sorry. 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 Is, is Rayhan too the... good? <laughs> no, the first sliver. Oh, okay, right. That is, that old, is good old cast triggers that can yep. through humility. Um, but yeah, like you're basically like, and also like planeswalker commanders. Yes, yes, yes. But for the most part, like but you're, those are terrible. You're shutting off, like first of all, like yeah, like all the creatures in like every green deck, every not green, just like anything that people are playing in the creature slot becomes a card that doesn't really exist. And then you're also like heavily impacting almost every like deck's main strategy as well by landing this card <laughs> so like there's this really big incentive to want to play with it right and to want to make it work um issue being <laughs> all almost of that every commander deck revolves around yeah. creature. <laughs> it's just there's just there's <clears throat> two there's there's not enough like that you can do with humility on the board to actually like uh, uh, it's just uh <laughs> First well, you cast your Ishai, and to- then you let your opponents cast a lot of spells, you get it to about 2020, and then you play your humility. <laughs> there you go. Because I believe that even though um, it is a one with no abilities, it still counts as commander damage, right? It does. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, one of the things that's uh, that really is, is the death of humility is that it's just a card that, while very strong and needs to be answered, it's not worth tutoring for uh well i mean okay and sometimes it's worth tutoring for but it's I, not it's worth like compromising worth for. it's not worth compromising your main uh strategy and winning the game to look go look for humility yeah that, that's so, that's sort of the issue right it's like you just you, you can't for your own your own strategy your own proactive win winning the game strategy uh for something that merely hinders your opponents and doesn't actually advance you towards winning the game while simultaneously limiting your uh choices of cards that you can incorporate into your deck uh just due to trying to build around humility and and accommodate for it so you you take a big loss just in deck building and then when you don't have humility in play you're you're playing at a disadvantage um and then to get it in play you often have to spend a lot of resources doing so and also just like you just like can't find it consistently enough right like you could build like yeah. a, a six like a humility deck in a sixty card format, and like you can like fairly like reasonably consistently find a humility for the most part, and like you can like 
potentially like do other stuff that synergizes fine with humility but like it's just so hard to find specific like non-combo beast cards in this format consistently enough to like build your entire deck around them especially because there isn't really a good way to break parity on it in the command zone which means you also sort of need to find that yeah like, at that point yeah. if you're finding two specific cards why not just find two cards that win the game rather than but it's all uh it's the card you just you want to make it work so bad because if honestly, as soon as you could break it open it's just honestly double white is also not the best <laughs> yeah fair <laughs> well yeah it's also a thing <laughs> yeah the the one uh the one case where i thought like of building a like jank brew around humility and, and kind of do something like that was a uh a loro turbo ad nauseum with like minor stacks elements in it but i'm like i just didn't have the heart to build that compared to like some of the other better esper commanders you can build it's like it's, and even, oh man even with the right? esper commanders it's like a good yeah, thought yeah. Experiment. yeah. <laughs> even when <laughs> even when it got printed um like uh when jace got printed i like toured around with making like a humility zur consult list because you can win with jace and it's not a creature and all that stuff and even then it was still just like god this is just terrible <laughs> <laughs> like I'd, yeah. i would much rather just be like getting a necropotence and doing that thing instead <laughs> okay so uh next up on our list we have hushbringer and i know morgan wants to talk a lot about this one so yep. you know yeah this floor. was a card that when it was spoiled um, you know, people, there was some buzz, you know, it shut down Hulk was obviously the primary use case, uh, and Dockside was still sort of fresh in people's minds. Uh, at the time, Thassa's Oracle didn't exist, so it wasn't quite as appealing as it is now. Now it, you would, you know, this shuts down like almost every deck. Um, and what I've found when trying to brew with it is that I'll put it in a deck and it doesn't even have to stop that many things. Like, maybe it's just three or four, but those four could be, like, really good effects. And then you sort of go, oh, well, you know, I don't want to have it in play if I have one of these in hand. And then it just doesn't really work out. Like, if you're in a deck without black and you want the tutors, you know, you might have, like, a spell seeker or maybe an Ewit in certain types of decks. And then, obviously, if you're in red, you want to be running Dockside. You know, maybe you are on some sort of consult win, so you're running Oracle, and then these considerations of like what you actually have to get out of what when you'll actually have to get it out of play yourself, sort of start to add up and make it. It's not impossible to play the card, but it's definitely awkward. I do want to say though, with specifically with Dockside and Hushbringer, like you are reasonably equipped to get creatures out of play, kind of as that is the basis of your combo. Like, if you're running Baron or um, Sabretooth, like, you were kind of ready to play around your own decks, but... Well, but then you're playing Baron or Sabretooth first, and then yeah, activating it, it, and then playing Dockside. Absolutely, yeah. I suppose, like, that trade-off isn't worth the, the downside. Yeah, I think the main place for uh, Hushbringer is... <laughs> I think lots of decks that that are running blue might not want to be running Hushbringer just in favor of more stack-based interaction because, you know, it's less specific. Uh, but the one place where Hushbringer really shines, I think, is in non-blue uh, Razzacath-based decks because you're not doing uh, ETB stuff or the ETB stuff you are doing is, like, uh, after you're, you've re-entered Razzacath, you might doing... Uh, eternal witness loops but at that point you can use razaketh to sacrifice the hushbringer uh and then also you're just you don't have access to the blue cards to hate on those uh those other archetypes so hushbringer really shines in those cases but uh as outlined before just too symmetrical in a lot of the other cases um yeah and so uh, uh we can move on to the next section if uh unless anyone has anything else to say so I think there are actually a couple more that fit into this category. Um, uh, okay, okay, sure. Yeah. What do we um, got? So, like, just uh, another one that's sort of, like, on the same level of humility, I think, which is, like, something that I've noticed a lot from people coming into the format from, like, 60-card formats, 
try to make work a lot because just like the power of it is Chalice of the Void. Because like in any mm. like 60 card format where it's legal, right? Like legacy and modern, like Chalice is a house, right? Like Chalice does a lot of work. Um see it in like a lot of colorless decks, and it's like, oh, like you just like don't run one cost things, then you play Chalice and you get the entire rest of the format. But <laughs> yeah. like in in CDH, it's so hard not to run one CMC cards <laughs> in like all the decks that you would want to be like running Chalice the Ward in. And it's like it's so hard to justify not running the one drop cards because you have a single Chalice of the Void in your deck, right? Because it's just again like one of those things that's like so hard to find on its own that it's not worth like building your entire deck around it. Yeah, a lot of the cards that you'd even use to find Chalice of the Void if you're trying to get it out are one drops. So you know, you have your Vampire <laughs> yeah. Tutor, your Imperial Vamp Seal, your Light <laughs> Tutor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, someone makes sense. Uh, anything else? Or yeah, um, just just quickly wanted to touch on uh, Spirit of the Labyrinth. Just to hate on you know Timnas and Ristic Studies and Thrasios and all of that, but you also typically need to draw cards if you're gonna. If you're gonna win a game, and uh, there just aren't a, there aren't a lot of commanders in white that are okay not drawing God, cards it just, it or just, like getting around it somehow. It just needs like a bob in the command zone, right? Like <laughs> you just need like a Phyrexian Arena effect or just like something to put cards directly into your hand, but they just don't really exist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not in white at least. No, not at all. Honestly, okay, I think well, it needed to be a three on, one oh. <laughs> or probably a one three. <laughs> just, that would help a lot. Block block, him, no? uh, <laughs> Shut it down. But you don't so need to block Timno. No, no, no. Yeah, no but you get, a, you, get a, you, know, <laughs> you get a block Timno so that if they do the line of swing into you with Timno, oh, you don't block. Great. Kill the thing. Kill the spirit of the labyrinth with the Timno trigger on the stack. Get you. Draw my card. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> next up, our next category is combo pieces that need too many enablers. Uh, so another fairly short, uh, <laughs> fairly short uh, list here. Uh, I'll kick things off, and that's with the uh, bonus round. So personally, I've not built any bonus round decks, but uh, every time I've seen one pilot, I've definitely appreciated it. Uh, and that's because uh, <laughs> they generally do require the deck to be quite specific in terms of running lots of rituals, cantrips, and I mean tutors. But tutors are you know something that you're going to be running anyway. So. Uh, yeah, Morgan, I know you've done you, you know, suffered through Stormcast for long enough with bonus rounds, so I, you can Hey, it's still in the deck. <laughs> you um, can talk about it, yeah. Yeah, like it's just you either need like a little bit too much mana to go off with it, or just a few too many cards in hand, because if you go like, you know, bonus round, tutor, then like it can be pretty awkward, you know, you get mana with one tutor, but then the other tutor needs to find, you know, some other tutor and like you just need, you know, it's like, oh, well, I'm doing, am I doing high tide? Am I doing frantic search? Um, and then you just kind of realize that in order to enable it, you wind up, you know, dark petition, you wind up with this package of like eight or nine cards that aren't like terrible on their own in a storm deck, but you're going like, this is definitely more than I want to be running when I could just do passes oracle and consult <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> why <laughs> are we gonna go even one episode of that mentioning passes oracle never no zero <laughs> percent <laughs> chance yeah pour one out pour one out for another win con destroyed by thoracle uh <laughs> Yeah. Next up on the list of cards destroyed by Thoracle. Uh, sure. <laughs> this is. <laughs> sure. sure. Yeah, all right. Fine. <laughs> Matt, you can get this one. Yeah, this is uh, Birthing Pod and Vanifar. Um, and so I get these Birthing Pod type effects. Um, so I think most Birthing Pod combos need at least upwards of like eight cards, uh, not all of which are particularly ideal for you know late game type strategies or early game type strategies but are specifically just to enable the combo um and also in the case of birthing pot you're shut down by both curse totem and null rod pretty effectively uh and i guess so there's cage for good measure and cage for good yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. And, and you can probably speak better to vanifar and the command zone 
but in the 99 um uh you know it for 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 one thing it doesn't have haste but uh it certainly needs um its fair share of kind of just dead cards and like yeah oh god it's like and the issue is like the cards that it needs don't like perfectly overlap with the cards that yasan wants in the 99 so like you're you're in this weird place where like you like there's a bit of overlap and you want to be playing them all together, but like you also have to be playing like cards that are dedicated to each of them. And actually, that even kind of applies to Birthing Pod and Vanifar. Like you don't really want to be running Felidar Guardian with Vanifar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Like, just. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's rough. <laughs> yeah, and we can. I think that there's. Not too much else to be said for for Brilliant Potter Vanifar. I mean, theoretically, they could print some you know thing that wins almost on the spot without record, like just drastically reduces the number of uh, slots required in deck, um, and just makes this one card you know win condition package, even though it's a bit mana intensive and susceptible to hate, just worthwhile. Uh, like a more fair version of what Thorical did to Hulk. But you know, until that <laughs> happens, <laughs> so it's just like the most nondescript, like d- description yeah. of what you need to. Oh uh, man, it needs a well, strong. I mean, it's, it's something strong in the command zone. The problem is, you kind of need an effect. You need like a useful effect that helps you win the game, stapled to an untap effect, which like I feel like they're not gonna do. Yeah, like untap effects are just like so. It's so much to ask for. For them to be like stable to it, like a useful effect, considering just like yeah. how much damage they can do in a standard environment, uh, it's rough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you want to play it. Yeah. You want to play Vanifar in the ninety nine because it's sick. <laughs> Pro- tool, probably not likely that so cool. uh, they're fun decks to play. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, pro- probably not worth. Pro- probably not. I wouldn't hold my breath for Watsi to print something that that you know makes Burning Pod. Uh, strong enough to to be you know in the top tier of CDH uh, post Thorical, but I don't know, man. Some of you blood plot players out there who are still holding on for some reason. <laughs> Cross your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel for you. Uh, uh, yeah. Next up on our list is Alluren. Um, this is like the classic combo version of like the thing, right? The humility problem. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like on the uh, flip side of the coin. A lot of a lot of CDH decks, um, and you can you can kind of trace this trend backwards. Have been like adaptions of uh, legacy decks uh, in the past. So you're looking at you know a learn combo and legacy. You're like, oh man, I can run all those cards in Commander, and you know I can do all these like recruiter chains, and oh, I'm gonna be it's gonna be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then you realize like, oh wait. Um, that's not super easy to assemble outright, and that's going to combo, and that's going to sort of result in a lot of uh, pieces in my deck that are just going to be kind of trash cards. When you're Turns when you're comboing in Legacy in a sixty card deck, when you can run four copies of these cards, you know what? And and, and that's the sole purpose of your deck is just that combo. It's all right. It, 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 you can get away with it. But in Commander, when you need you know your learn and then your recruiters and your cavern harpies and all this. All these trash cards. Yep. Recruiter, <laughs> recruiter isn't one out of every eight cards in your deck. Yeah. It's one <laughs> it's, out of a hundred or two yeah. out of a hundred if you're in the right colors for it. Yeah. Um and that and those and colors then, are Naya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that pretty much puts you on non blue or non black, which is like really devastating. <laughs> I mean, or you could be on you could be in five color. But. Five color alert, baby. <laughs> Ken Riff, let's go. That's definitely not a meme that's been fucking going for years at this point. <laughs> yeah, I, I think what would really need for a learn to be uh, viable is like some more. sort of commander, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> commander probably that 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 can uh, take advantage of it or or do something. Uh, on, you see a that. five color recruiter in the command zone that can bounce itself so that it can get itself back into your hand <laughs> so you can use it again. I mean, Hopefully even if learn. it was just a regular recruiter. Yeah, I guess it would like, go get a cavern harpy. Sure. But yeah, 
usually you might have to get something blue first. Oh god. <laughs> this yeah. is, this Even is so, I still so think it's worse. good enough. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's going to do what what lots of uh, other cards have done in the past, which is turn some niche commander into you know be that special combo card that combos with that particular commander and add a little sprinkle of diversity onto the format. It's all the uh, problem is through that method. They know, like I think Aluren is a card that's present enough oh, in yeah. the design team's mind that like they're not going to print something that just breaks Aluren. It's definitely, enough. it's definitely like oh, okay. Uh, this is this is a pretty broken effect, like in development. Oh, this is a pretty broken effect when you can repeatedly use it. Like, let's go check what. Co- oh, right, a learn exists. Okay, we probably have to tune this down a bit. <laughs> so, unless does, does anyone else have anything to say about a learn? I feel like I feel like it's there's not a whole lot to say well, there. It but. also suffers just as a quick point. It also like just suffers when people are playing Gilda Drakes in their decks. <laughs> Because <laughs> like yeah, you yeah. try to, you just you you try to do your thing. You oh my god, I get a flash in this cabin harpy. I get a flash in this other thing, and then in response, your opponent flashes it a gilded drake for no mana and takes your combo or, piece. Dude, I've always yeah, wished or, Hushbringer or had letter- flash. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I've always wished Hushbringer had flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say also like if someone's able to stop your combo, like they. You resolve the Aluren, and then you know you go to cast your next spell. They get to you know nature's claim it or something or uh, trophy it. They also just get to dump their Thrasus and Timna into play <laughs> yeah, so. for free. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, um, so yeah, definitely got some problems there. Uh, just just before we move on to the next category, out of these three, and that is bonus round, birthing pod, Aluren. What do you think is like the the closest to viable still, even though you know we're saying I think, that like, uh, I think bonus round. round is like yeah. solidly right there. Like bonus round I is think like it's, it's not even unviable. Like it like I think it is kind of I think it's like I think there's an opinion like you can be sub, it's subjective. I don't know. I think it is like pretty I, much I, I think like it's it's a flex slot, but I think it's like definitely good enough to make ninety nines right. Well, I think I think bonus round is the most generically viable, but Aluren like actually has the commanders like that make it work. Sure, it's just like the closest to like actually breaking into like mass viability. I mean, well, sorry, no, I don't think I don't think Aluren is likely to be. I think bonus round is more likely to be mass viable or viable in you know a substantial number of decks. But currently, Aluren is more playable because there's one or two commanders that it actually synergizes with. Yeah, sure very effectively right on i i'm also kind of on the uh the bonus round uh train myself uh in terms of just card the card the existing card pool and what the meta looks like right now i think bonus round of the three it's the closest to what i would say is is viable but obviously i, I do agree with with morgan that Aluren is is uh is right up there as well um so next up uh we've got cards that the meta is too ready to deal with um so <laughs> who, who wants to explain this category because yeah uh okay so There's... these are cards that um are pretty much are not they become too easily like ineffective because there's just a high chance of your opponents having the answer but by themselves, you know, in a, in a in a vacuum, they're extremely strong cards. So the first on this list is Nyx Bloom Ancient. This card literally triples the mana that you produce. Uh, we know that there's like you can easily abuse mana with things like Thrasios already in your command zone. But besides that, you know, having um, extra mana on your combat turn is certainly not um, something something to. Uh, I guess devalue, but next bloom ancient in competitive. This is this this screams to me as the ultimate Timmy card. What are you what are you even saying? <laughs> it's, it's like it's, <laughs> it's super easy to cheat in the play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You it's got, easy. To, uh, it's easy to reanimate. It's it's easy. You can natural order it. Uh, I guess those are pretty much the primary avenues. <laughs> yeah, natural order as like a ritual <laughs> to next bloom. Yeah, pretty sweet. Uh, Next up, unless more people have stuff to say about Nyx Bloom, uh, which I think they're it's pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, we've got Defense of the Heart. Uh, this is one I've wanted. Be, I've wanted to play this card for sick. so long. <laughs> Defense of the Heart is uh, sick. 
It's just, uh, it's just too, <laughs> it's too obvious is the issue, right? <laughs> yeah. It's just, uh... Yeah, and there's not, like, a concise two-card win that doesn't have another condition. Like, if you're doing Oracle Spellseeker, then you have to resolve your, well, your yeah, console. But, but you can play Oracle Leveler. <laughs> sure, but then you're playing the leveler. <laughs> what is this pioneer <laughs> man? Come on, <laughs> dude, just actually, actually, just play Oracle Inverter <laughs> in a defense deck. Get dude, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, defense of the heart is is, is sick. Um, definitely a card that you know if people are slacking on you know removal for whatever reason. Everyone's running consult, so they all switch to stack based removal, and there's no, uh, they're, they're cutting back on their nature's claims and stuff. Maybe it's also Maybe just you like can, the, you can get away with defense the, of the, the heart. The issue with it though is that, like, uh, like it's, it's always the person that it's going to trigger on is always going to be the dorks player. And what happens is the dorks player just like, all right, go to attack, swing everything at the person with blockers, <laughs> trade off yeah. my entire board to stop you from resolving this. <laughs> Dude, that, I count that as a win in my book. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's not terrible. Maybe it just needs a really Long strong, like, green Vidalcan Ori commander or something. <laughs> <laughs> just drop into play for free. Right at the end step. Yo. Oh, dude. Oh, um, my God. Dude, you played in an Academy Rector deck and then you flash in an Academy Rector on somebody's end step. <laughs> Put oh, defensive the heart into play. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So uh, that's, that's next level, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then on your upkeep, you get Protein Hulk and uh, Viscerous. Yep. Easy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> this is the category of that's cards you can't done, play yeah. ever. <laughs> um,. <laughs> Okay, so last last on our list that of uh, cards that the meta is too hard to deal with, and that's Yogmoth. Um, yeah, Yogmoth ran physician uh, out of the command zone. Uh, Morgan, you did you put this on the list? I did. Okay. Guilty. <laughs> uh, see, the <laughs> problem us, is, is the, the, the problem is feel. is that first of all, you're in mono black, which means all your mana comes from artifacts, and then you have to activate a creature to do the thing. And then also, all your combos involve something going to the graveyard and then coming back into play. So you just lose to, like, literally everything. And also, rule of laws and, like, torpor orbs often for good measure. Um, and, like, it's just, it's very obvious what you're trying to do and very easy to shut down with one of many commonly occurring hate pieces. Yeah, I feel like that's a pretty succinct summary of... Uh what makes Yogmoth, you know, just just on the edge. Um, oh, wait, we had Brea somewhere, but I, I, th it, I think it falls in this category. I don't know how it got off our list. It's just, like, once again, a card that, like, literally every single stacks piece and or removal piece can deal with. <laughs> to quote to quote Raygon, play a random stacks piece, then ask Brea how she feels. <laughs> but on paper, it's like an infinite mana outlet, it's got great abilities, to, you know, it's it's removal, it's value, and then it's like, oh well Yeah. Yeah. Don't no. let the shady car salesman, you know, upsell you on Brea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta look look under the hood. Look under the hood. Um Okay, so our next category is combo pieces without enough, without good enough enablers. Uh, yeah. So we can we can kind of hammer through. We've got a, a few cards on this list, so we can hammer through it pretty combo, quickly yeah. because there, it's not not too hard to see where these things go. So first up, uh, we've got Bone Miser, uh, which is the I it's guess just, reverse. It's the reverse waste knot, knot. yeah, on lights. Yeah. It's just like it's so. It like and I okay okay I'm gonna get this out there. I know there are people that are gonna get angry at us for putting this on this list because they're gonna be like, "No, we solved it. We we already fix. We already did the bone miser thing. We made it work." <laughs> and of course, they're referring like the, to shadow bag stuff. Um, the closest deck that makes bone miser work is uh, or where we would fit naturally is in Gitrog. Just because you're already running a bunch of discard outlets, uh, and then you get like sweet stuff like Life from the Loam, and uh, you get that bone and miser dude, and step sculpt going on. off of not only lands but also non-creature spells. <laughs> yeah, and just even then, it's, yeah, it's just, like God, honestly, like, it's, oh, yeah. the card needs like some like some non-creature spell 
that can like get itself back or something or just like enable like a Gitrog-esque end step sculpt right where like if you like you discard it and it's like oh like madness get something else back and like keep the train going <laughs> it's just like well, I mean I mean it, it kind of does that with uh, life from the loam it, right? you it just kind of does that, you generate yeah. the draw trigger it dredges itself but um, it's really that like that's like milling your deck <laughs> exactly like you just spin <laughs> like your you wheels just, for yeah, a lot like of you're, it, and you're, you're, you have to you do like end step mill your library and it's like and you don't have the like the card draw trigger generating that get does off of stuff just hitting the bin you have to be discarding Which, it so like when you if you go through the trouble to assemble get rog you so you you arrive at that conclusion you're like man actually bone miser would work if i also just had get rog yeah. and then you realize you've assembled get rog with discard outlet <laughs> it's just this random five cmc card that's like why am i not why have i not just devoted this as like a random tutor to find dacmore or better yet, you know, you can skip the discard outlet and bone miser and just run underrealm lich and win that way with underrealm lich and get rog. So, you know, we don't run underrealm lich and get rog. So, you know, clearly, clearly bone miser is, you know, just a, a step down there. So probably a certain commander or, uh, or, or particular card, like Reed was saying away from being, uh, playable is playable too harsh i feel i feel i feel like it's it's a combo card like it's a like very reasonable combo card just like waiting in the wings for something right like it's very it very obviously has some power there but there's like not like the pieces just don't line up just right yet but i feel like they have the potential to in the future okay next up uh we have bolus's (laughs) citadel uh matt you get this one Sure. Uh, Bulls of Citadel, um, you know, und- undoubtedly a really strong card for Storm. Um, but, you know, the one thing that you don't want to see is a land on top of your library. And I guess Bulls of Citadel um, <laughs> has a hard time dealing with that problem. Uh, and generally, like, I guess what it needs is something that can help it from the command zone. And I suppose that Sir- Sirku Demir Lobotomus is not. The solution to that uh yeah yeah. it's it it definitely has that problem and then also you kind of want to be able to you know use use your life effectively or if people are are you know hammering away your life total is there some way that you can gain it back and kind of use this to storm through your deck or are you just using it almost kind of like an ad nauseum it's it's got like a niche that it, yeah, if you have a way to clear the land from the top of your library, then it is like an ad nauseum that cheats. It's, mana, it's much which is better insane. than an ad nauseum uh, yeah. if you can deal with the land problem. Because at that point, it's just about having the density of uh, life gain versus you know uh, draw or you know versus uh, cantrips or whatever it is uh, mm-hmm. tutors. Yeah, definitely, definitely a uh, a card that I th- I feel like is just it's gonna get it's gonna get broken one day like it's, it's, it's like not, it's, it's an artifact it's so you can cheat it out fairly easily yeah it's just like yeah yeah that being said too like circu is a strong enabler for bolsa citadel but um is not that strong in, in the current metagame so if and also like game shift circu is close but like so he's so circu can solve the single land on the top of your library issue but he still doesn't solve like the double land on top of your library issue very well, which is also an issue. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Yeah, unless you're playing like hard Circu like top deck control with like you're you're basically like the lantern control in modern. You're running like Pixis of Pandemonium and <laughs> oh <my laughs> uh, <gosh. Yeah. laughs> uh, Codex Shredder <laughs> and all that all that garbage. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's that's pretty good for both Citadel. Uh, Reed, do you want to cover uh, Mystic Sanctuary? Yes, I do. Thanks for asking. Because, <laughs> god damn it. Okay, I know everybody and their mother has been like working on Mystic Sanctuary decks. I don't think there's been enough like thought and work put into them. Honestly, Dude, this was my this was my New Year's prediction was that Mystic Sanctuary it's was just, it's so uh, like, underexplored and it's gonna get it's gonna and, like, see more okay. uh, more play. Okay, like maybe maybe it doesn't have the piece yet. And I, I I might be willing to accept that, but I also think that like 
Okay, it's like a combination of like not having enough obvious things to be doing with it, like aside from like turns, and like also just people like not putting in the work to make it happen. I don't know. Like, why? Dude, one thing to say uh, with Mystic Sanctuary in my mind is like there, there aren't enough decks that just run that card for value. I think that's true. <laughs> I, I do think that's like, true. I think if you've ever had three islands in play in any game you've played, like that's already enough. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you've historically in any single one of your games that you've ever played you've ever had three islands in play it's just yeah you should just be playing mystic sanctuary that's, that's already good enough <laughs> I, i'm a firm believer in this card i think this card has potential to become you know whether it's through the printing of a commander or uh, a particular card that's just you know makes it easy to assemble i think this card has the potential to uh really become a top tier you know, or a top tier alt win con or fringe win con. It's hard. It's hard to say that you know a uh, win con is going to come close to to uh, to console. Especially when there are but... like other like there are, there are decks using it as a like semi win con already. But like I think yeah, there's like uh, there's got to be something that will just like really really like abuse Mystic Sanctuary as a card, dude. If Rashmi had Kefnet's ability, boom, <laughs> Can you just get it. <laughs> uh yeah so i feel like yeah mystic sanctuary not quite there yet but out of maybe any of the cards that we're going to mention uh in this episode at all i think this one i have the highest hopes for well yeah because you also just you don't need to dedicate nearly as much to it as you do some of these other ones like you can just kind of jam it in and put in like the one like you're using it to recur a spell that's usually good anyways yeah so it's, it's a free slot in the sense that it's a land so you know when a combo piece is a land you you generally count that as a free slot or like a half slot if the land is like a tap land or you know a bad effect uh like dakmore salvage right hard to count that as an actual land and get rug but you know mystic sanctuary it's fetchable you know yeah. you've got four <laughs> other copies of it in the form of your fetch lands uh it has good generic utility. It's an island. Like, oh, it's just, man, it's so, so, in, so good. It's incidental value is like probably the highest among the cards on this, this list. Yeah. Uh, Morgan, you can get the next one and that's going to be cadaverous bloom. Uh, sure. Yeah. So it's uh <laughs> five man enchantment. that lets you exile cards from your hand for two mana. Uh, which just mean you know, if you have, say, Training Grounds and a Thrasios, you can sort of loot, quasi-loot through your whole deck. Um, but it's a five-mana enchantment, and it's hard to consistently have sort of the value you need to sustain the chain. And it also only makes black or green mana, which additionally makes it harder to sustain the chain, because you can't make blue to cast cantrips or, like, your wheels or things like that. Um, so you kind of have to find your mana enablers along the way as well. Uh, I know Reed's played around with this card. Do you have anything? Did I miss anything? Um, no. Or like, do you want to really. talk about what kind of card you think realistically could be printed that would enable it? Yeah, I mean, like, anything, like, if, if there's, like, pretty much just, like, anything that's, um, like Thrasios in the way that it puts a card in your hand... But, like, okay, like, the thing that would be printed that would make this card good or, like, playable or, like, a combo piece would be, like, a card that gets printed, probably a commander, that, like, you pay two mana or one mana, but, like, two mana and put any, like, card in your hand. Right? Like... Even if even if it was getting like super super low value, like just like put a land from your deck in your hand, like a basic land or something like that, like that's already probably good yeah. enough, I think, for this. Where like you just like just like getting any card, even if it's just super low quality things, just anything for two mana in like green black, I think probably makes cadaverous bloom I mean, like a very real card if you were if you were doing that all you're doing is you're exiling all the lands from your library and ending with plus two mana but like that I, was the card that was printed i still feel like that's sort of fine 
five mana know. exile all the lands from your library. Isn't that a blue card? And it's yes, like two cheaper. mana difference. <laughs> it's two mana. Okay, so like, it's also, I, it's I also like uh, it's like this enormous like post Nas engine as well. Like it's yeah. uh, I don't know. Oh yeah, there, there's something. There's there's another way to fix it. Like I I think if you already have uh, if you've already cast your ad nauseum, you already have plenty of cards in your hand to win the game. So Cadaver's Bloom is just overkill. And and if you have too few cards, then you run out of gas way too quickly. So it needs it needs like a an, an easier way than ad nauseum to get about like I don't know, like six cards into your hand. I think what's probably more realistic is a commander that very efficiently lets you return cards from your graveyard to your hand or something like that. Where you can sort of churn, yeah. like you fill your graveyard and then it's like, oh, you know, maybe maybe it's the commander has an ability that's something like you discard your hand and replace it with your graveyard, or like exile your hand and replace it with your graveyard. Or like, so you just exile your hand to make mana anyways and then pull a bunch of cards out of your graveyard and get to keep going. A, sim- a like Simic that. commander yeah. that ETBs and gives you like five random cards from your graveyard, for instance. Like... <laughs> seasons passed as a commander <laughs> but like actually untar like you just you just get five random cards i don't know just yeah just like anything that like gives you a mass quantity of low quality cards right or like random Which, cards yeah, or whatever I mean, like i think is a really like would make cadaverous bloom like a playable thing hmm. okay uh next up on our list we have carnival of souls uh, and for those of you who don't know, that's uh, an enchantment for one in a black that reads, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you lose one life and add black mana to your mana pool. Uh, so notably, this triggers off your opponent's casting creatures and when their their creatures enter the battlefield, so they'll be chipping away at your life total. But, you know, <laughs> the fact that you're, you're netting a black mana off a creature ETB is... Uh, you know, not 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 so bad. Yeah, um, it's not just a cost reducer. Like it, it also gives you colored mana. Yeah, it's like it's so close to being like an elf storm card. <laughs> it's pretty good in Yogmoth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, it's it's just it's. <laughs> I think the issue with it is like it's in a color that doesn't necessarily want like do creature things inherently so you need another color to do it with and like it adds a color that's not particularly useful for doing like creature shenanigans and also the enchantment card type makes it like fairly inaccessible but it's just so Dude, it's, close <laughs> it's too mana it's, it's so, it's like, too so mana. easy to get down but like finding it and doing other things like getting the other things that go along with it is like the hard part right it's a card that you don't think of a shell no shell immediately comes to mind when you think of it right now but you can very easily see how a card could be printed down the line that all of a sudden makes it a card or a card. <laughs> and I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure EDH players have been saying that since the inception of the format, considering Carnival of Souls has been out since 1999. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just um, just got hope. past the 20th anniversary of this card not being broken yet. <laughs> Next up, Matt, we've got a uh, trifecta of cards here, and that's going to be brought back uh, Second Sunrise and Faith Reward. The breakfast combo. <laughs> Sorry, that was just, I'm just, I don't know, that wasn't worth it. But anyways, uh, these cards um, are, take advantage of um, a, a pretty easy effect to uh, accomplish, which is get cards in your graveyard, um, and they are extremely powerful because the more you put in your grave or the more you can you know get into your graveyard in the turn um the more effective they get uh and i guess like uh, the traditional enablers for these cards are like are eggs so um artifacts that sack to draw or sack to do abilities um land fetch lands um and for i guess in the case of i, I guess brought all back of them is, yeah yeah like brought uh, back is the easiest one because it's like Two CMC and it can f- reasonably fit as like on a, on a ramp curve, right? So that if you're using it as a combo piece, um, and then you're let's say you go turn one fetch land, turn two fetch land, turn three double crack brought back, like that's pretty nice that it has that other utility. Can confirm um, it feels really good. Yeah, that that's a that's sick. 
Um, Wait, Morgan, what do you run brought back in? I Resonance? have now taken it out, but it was in cats for a while. Okay, yeah. So I, it, I run brought back in my uh, Anafenza list, um, and I do like Razaketh LED, LED E-Wit, e- yeah. loops uh, with brought yeah. back, which is pretty nice. So yeah, they're, they're super strong in the sense that they can bring like all these like, these powerful cards back. But um, when it comes to like comboing with these cards, um, you either need too many cards or indiv- or your deck kind of gets littered with like low quality cards, like. I don't know, like Codex Shredder or something. Okay, now I have something to say about these cards because, you know, th- I'm just going to tie into one of the cards we mentioned previously. <laughs> um, I was brewing around like a mid power sort of like eggs deck with, uh, you know, either I was going to do Silas and Bruce or Silas and Sadar. Um, and the idea was going to be using like the second sunrise face reward uh, combo with eggs, but. I sort of realized that a good direction to take it would be uh, using Mystic Sanctuary to return the card to the top of your library, and then you can like crack an egg to return it back. And you're, if you're netting mana or netting uh, draws, you know, keep going that way. Uh, so if you're using um, if you're using like a sacrifice, like land sacrifice effects, so Sylvan Safekeeper, uh, Squandered Resources. Zurin Orb, if you want to be really cheap with an artifact, or you can do Greater Gargadon, you can uh, pretty easily sacrifice all your lands if you've got your three uh, your three islands, uh, cast your second sunrise, get all that back, net your mana, put that back on top, and then if you've got, uh, no, if you've got your, uh, oh god, what are, what are they calling them, the Horizon Lands? That's right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, definitely, if you've got like Horizon Lands. lands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can you can crack yeah, one of those. Yeah, my favorite the set, card. modern canopy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think there's I think there is unexplored room there. Um, you know, especially for stuff like uh, let's say blue white, like you're just in pure Azorius. Uh, Mystic Sanctuary being pretty easy to find off your fetch lands, uh, and then artifacts in the form of. Uh, uh god uh Zuran orb uh being fairly easy to tutor and same with uh instants and sorceries there might be some room if you're looking for something in pure azorius like let's say a grand arbiter where you've you've traditionally struggled to find a good win con maybe this is something worth looking into uh but yeah i think there's there's room to be explored and i'm excited to uh, see what people come up with I think this and like this is something that's true of a lot of the cards we've discussed so far particularly the ones that sort of come from 60 card formats it's one of those cards where you have like you have it as a combo piece and then the rest of your deck just has like a super high density of combo pieces that are sort of individually fine on their own and maybe don't like one of them plus it isn't the combo you just have a bunch of some effect um, you know, this is also true of a Lurin, uh, where like you just have a bunch of things that let you dig or keep going, or you know, the recruiters that let you tutor. Um and then the deck sort of works, but you can do that because if there are four or five cards that enable it, you can run four of each of those in a 60 card deck. Whereas here you can run one of each of those in a hundred card deck, so you have quick math, like one a little less than one sixth the density and then that just kind of makes it fall apart a little bit like you wind up having to tutor for the pieces that combo yeah. with second sunrise rather than just like oh i'll just always have three of them because that's how the deck works well one of the the things i was doing with my initial second sunrise face reward stuff was i was jamming uh lots of like sacrifice self-sacrifice lands so you've got your like crystal vein um I think there's like archaeological dig or something like that. Yeah, the one that you can sack it for any color. Yeah, um, I was also doing uh, strip mine and wasteland to (laughs) sacrifice. (laughs) No, come on. The real secret is ghost quarter. Oh yeah, 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 ghost quarter. Ghost quarter is definitely sweet. Um, But yeah, I was running like 
strip mine wasteland ghost quarter all all that sort of sacrifice lands all that jazz and and the horizon lands as well uh and then and trying to enable mystic sanctuary <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's, dude, ooh, that's sweats man that's yeah yikes um yeah that's definitely that's definitely the struggle when you're trying to do something like that uh yeah it it's it's hard to imagine hard to imagine finding the right balance between you know not having to find something like a Zurin orb or a sack outlet uh while also trying to you know not run a bunch of crap cards but yeah uh next up we have breath of fury uh and uh reed you can cover this one it's just like <laughs> it's just so close <laughs> <laughs> in, ca- in case people do, cause most of these cards that we've been mentioning are, are fairly uh common we've given a, a, a brief description what is breath of fury okay, do? because yeah. i feel like this is one that's a bit more obscure yeah, yeah uh so breath of fury is a two red red enchantment aura enchant creature you control when enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player sacrifice it and attach breath of fury to a creature you control if you do untap all creatures you control and after this phase there's an additional combat phase so like the intended use for it is like you just like go through combat sacrificing a creature every time until you don't have any more creatures left but like all it needs is just something that generates like hasty tokens every time you swing <laughs> Geared was so Geared close so close so He's close so, yeah. it just like the just the tokens need haste that's all it needs to do and there just isn't any commander that does that and the issue that i have with this too is that like because it's in red and because it's an aura auras are super accessible by white like more so than like any other card type except for equipments right like you can you can find yeah, you, you can, got open yeah. the armory and like you, you yeah. can find auras fairly like fairly easily compared to like the other stuff that white can typically find which is like typically you have like one enchantment or one tutor for artifacts and enchantments which is e tutor and then you have like a dillic tutor and that's it and the rest are like equipment and aura tutors it's just like <laughs> it's so close <laughs> and it just it just needs like a naya ish commander or like a red green or something commander that generates hasty tokens every time it swings <laughs> I mean, like, if one player doesn't have any blockers and you are and you're and you're on Najila, like, this is definitely not bad. And you already have a couple tokens in play. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> and you have the mana to activate once. Yeah, the the, <laughs> the endorsement as the worst of the Najila win cons is not a glowing one. I'll admit, <laughs> but. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I don't know. It's just it's something that I'm just stuck on because the card reads like it should do something and it just doesn't do it yet. <laughs> yeah. Was it who was it who I was working on the red white boon weaver meme with? That that was with me. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> it almost gets there. I don't even remember all the the requirements, but I think there's like a, a like a a hundred. I think, items it, I think it was requirements. just you needed to give the first one haste. And you needed one other creature in play, and that was it. But yeah, it's not too, no, and and your opponents don't need can't have blockers like <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, just one of your. You have to be able to connect like a few times, and then you can yeah. find e- evasion. But. The worst of the Nagila enablers, they call it. <laughs> okay, well, our next category, our, our second from last, is going to be commanders that need a combo piece. Uh, and honestly, this list could be we've got two two commanders on this list, but this list could be much, much longer because it seems that one of the trends that, that Wizards has is just, you know, printing some card that all of a sudden breaks an old commander wide open. Uh, you know, so it, it could it could really happen in places that we just don't expect. But these are the ones where we've got like we, we think a reasonable could be printed uh fairly fairly soon and, and and become you know more meta players uh first up uh morgan i'll let you cover this since this is your uh this is your baby uh, we've got uh, marisil yeah we do um marisil's got i mean there's the currently has the mirror or sorry mirror med phantasm combo 
but that's just like a little too slot intensive and risky and you know dread return combos are often telegraphed and you're not in the colors to have dorks in play for dread return um but just if you could instant speed or if you could uh fast flicker rather than slow flicker marisol for like a reasonable cost then it would just become so much easier to win off of something like an intuition or like buried alive where you could actually get the combo pieces under Marisol in like a reasonable amount of time rather than like, Oh, I'll activate it and then wait till the end step and then wait till the next end step. And then like the combo (laughs) probably only works on your turn anyways. And then it just doesn't quite get there, but it's so close. And there's like, so many value pieces that you can oh, actually dude. run a substantial value package that does meaningful stuff. I would love to see a CDH Marisil. I mean, as I hate facing that card against against that deck in mid power because uh, it's just got such high inevitability and it's you so hard it. to interact with. <laughs> I mean, you love it, <laughs> and it always exiles all my lands with Shaoku and oh god. Hey, Shaoku doesn't uh, exile lands. Sorry, exiles creatures, and then you've got the other one that destroys lands. Minion god. of Lushrak. and or steals my stuff with uh, Menark. Menark. Uh, I can't oh. deal with it. It does everything. <laughs> <I> didn't um, <laughs> see, the the first time somebody got angry at me for playing Marisol was literally the day the deck came out (laughs) i went i bought the precon i jammed in like the few cards that fit in it from the urtai deck i had on me at the time and then in the first game i ever played managed to uh use aetherling and assemble thousand year elixir uh thousand year elixir uh gilded lotus and then I forget I had some way of like flickering it or like sacrificing it and getting it back. And then I went infinite and then they were very, Oh, it was a dead eye navigator. And then I went infinite and someone was like, wow, that deck's like super not fun. I was like, it was probably you just me. threw like 10 <laughs> cards in a pre con. <laughs> you don't even know. You don't even know it's final form yet. Dude, I didn't, quite grasp the definition of winning more until I played against (laughs) (laughs) no but yeah Marisil I think would be one of the few decks that could be piloted as like a true kind of control deck in CEDH which you know people love to say oh this deck is control blah 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 you know most decks that you think are control are not control they're just you know, like tempo, tempo combo decks, things like <laughs> Activating that. Activating Nev's disc every turn. Now that's control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, for real. Yeah, um, Marisol would be super interesting. Uh, next up, though, uh, we've got Tygam. And Tygam, uh, sorry, there's actually two Tygams. Uh, there's Tygam oh the DC <laughs> Hand and right? Tygam Ujitai Master. But only so, one of them needs a combo piece because the yeah, other no, one's We're talking terrible. about Tygam Ujitai Master. Um, so, you know, uh, actually recently, uh, we probably should have mentioned this in uh, new developments, but friend of the show, uh, Tim, uh, posted on the subreddit his updated Tygam list uh, because the up until this point, like Xerox Tygam was the uh, which was like the current deck list database list had been around and had been updated in like two years. So he's like, oh, uh, this is a deck that, you know, I'm going to be interested in playing. So I'm going to give it a little update. Uh, so he he went and, and tried adding some of the new cards since then and, and new technologies and philosophies and didn't change a whole bunch. But definitely uh, the aid of Mystic Sanctuary gave it a, a some better, I guess, regrowth effects uh, since before that they were running... Um, like the three mana sorcery speed regrowth for uh to oh, turn spells relearn mm. yeah <laughs> there are some and there's some that are like only sorceries which obviously is not great if you're just trying to like regrow uh counter spells for value and then some put just back on top of the library so not not great but uh with the uh with, with mystic sanctuary which one you know pretty accessible you get to Cast your turn spell, get two turns off the rebound with Tygam, then you put your Mystic Sanctuary into play, and then you get, you know, another two turns. So just off that value alone is pretty sick. But then it also enables um, 
I think it's, is it called Tragic Lesson? From, Reed, you were talking about the popper. Yes, Tra- Tragic like Lesson from Hour of Devastation? Yep. Or not, sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry, Amon Cat. Right? Amon Cat, yeah. No, no, yeah, Hour yeah, of Devastation. Yeah, Hour. Hour. Sorry. Is it, sorry. Okay. Hour? <laughs> okay. What is yeah, it? Hour. So, <laughs> hour of Devastation. Hour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. We got that sorted. <laughs> but uh, tragic lesson basically uh, allows you to. It, wait, it's, well, a for it. it's an three instant, mana draws instant. you two cards, yeah. return a land to well, your. No, no, hand, so, it's, so it's three. It's three mana, blue instant, draw two cards, then either discard a card or return a land you control to your hand. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, with uh, this, it allows you. Uh, unlike the previous relearn combos. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Like relearn is one of the sorcery speed regrowths. You would have to eventually have enough mana to cast a turn spell and uh, relearn in the same turn. Uh, so that's obviously very mana intensive. Now, tragic lesson plus mystic sanctuary allows you to uh, split that cost, but it it does come at the the cost of it's only that one card, the one just tragic lesson in Mystic Sanctuary that that's cheapening it. So tie game still, for the most part, if you want to have a good density of you know turn spells and and regrowth effects, you need to run a lot of the worst ones. So I don't think it's you know out of the woods yet and into viability. But honestly, if if tie game gets more stuff printed for it that fits that that mold and, and makes the combo more efficient. The fact that it makes all your instant sorcery spells uncounterable and has sick value off of like rebounding stuff. God damn, that's a lot of potential. Dude, and it blocks Timna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very importantly blocks Timna. Uh, but yeah, Tygam is one that's so... Once its potential is fully unlocked, it's going to be something else. Just a force to be reckoned with having all a control deck with uncounterable counter spells and their co- their combo cards are themselves uncounterable yeah it's it's that's going to be interesting for sure do you guys have anything to say on tiger uh, or i think you summed it up pretty seems well seems like a <laughs> pretty <laughs> comprehensive description Imagine yeah. if he was Esper, though. <laughs> oh God! I don't you re- know? Dude, I would rather. <laughs> I feel like I'd rather ban. Too much. I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah. And so our final category is cards where the cost is too high. So this can be both mana cost and deck building cost. Uh, so first on this list we have Oath of Druids. Uh, we should just like. So, yeah, it's just. <laughs> Re- uh, reach or you, you, you go for it is you just want to play it <laughs> it's a card that play it's broken in vintage it's banned in legacy there's gotta be there's gotta be something going on with it right <laughs> but yeah it's called gristle brand <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah it's just like you right you can't you can't get grizzle brand off of it and also you're being forced into playing this like creature basically like no creature deck aside from whatever you're getting with it but you're playing a no creature deck in green which is so rough because like you're in green you want to be on all the dorks and everything but it just it's stopping you from doing that and it's just yeah and and also like if you think about it what's the card that like you'd most want to cheat out if it was like, oh, you're just going to cheat a creature from your deck into play consistently, what would be like the card that you'd want to cheat out that's legal in the format? Yeah, and, and the, the answer would be card ra- that would be yeah. 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 exactly, and, yeah. <laughs> which uh, and or awkward and or Protean Hulk, which like <laughs> Protean Hulk <laughs> also yeah, <awkward>. also awkward. <laughs> like none of the things that you're getting with it feel great to get, unless you're getting like specifically like I don't know, like a Jenga Taxius, in which case it's just like. Okay, like this isn't worth it. This is not worth the deck building constriction <laughs> as a whole. <laughs> yeah, like I think the closest thing to just generically winning is is Tide's Boat Tyrant, but like, gross. yeah, it's just, yeah, <laughs> um, about that. <laughs> well, yeah. speaking of of Oath of Druid like effects and hitting into Tide's Boat Tyrant and whatnot, uh, this is going to lead well into our next two cards. Uh, which are Proteus Staff and Divergent Transformations, which I think we can kind of talk about in the same breath. And as just Oath like, of I guess, like just Polymorph 
strategies in general and ra- uh, reality scramble. yeah like reality scramble yeah. all that stuff so i think reality scramble potentially is a bit different just because of planeswalker commanders that's my opinion but i think for the the problem is that they suck yes. <laughs> yeah oh. like, paying, paying like four mana plus a com- uh, your commander's cost for an ugin still isn't good in this format <laughs> um but like at least at least divergent wants you to play the thrasios and oath of druids doesn't want you to play the thrasios yeah, yeah. <laughs> i had i had a uh a, not not a competitive but like a more mid to high power uh will and rowan deck built around the idea that you would reality scramble will for his minus and just stack the minuses by scrambling him back in. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and, it's and like almost a fairy. <laughs> yeah, you're, 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 it's costing you some mana every time, but eventually your reality scrambles get a bit cheaper, and then, I don't know, you're storming off doing stuff. Actually, cards. that's probably the closest. Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to use his, his minus more than once. You'd command zone him, but then you could have, like, cough and then some way of drawing the lands. Dude, we'll get there. But can't reality scramble send? Uh, hold on, let me. No, let but me I don't think it. you want to reality scramble <laughs> yeah. back into will. I think you would rather you can then go back and forth with cough to make mana to pay for it. And oh, yeah, fair, fair. Something that gets you the lands in hand somehow. Or, or, in theory, or what you do <laughs> is you just get down this road. It's, it's impossible. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, man, what's the one? Okay. Well, yeah, we, you we just like distracted. you just you just rescramble. <laughs> no. I don't know. All right, brewing episode. Yeah, Let's go. Much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the end of this episode, oh my God, Will and Kenrith new meta. But yeah, so Proteus Staff, Divergent, Reality Scramble, Oath of Druids. Uh, these kinds of decks, uh, or these kinds of cards that require your deck to have you know zero or very few creatures. Uh, definitely, definitely a hindrance uh, when you're running. You know more than one or two colors and those one or two colors especially if they're green uh definitely definitely want your uh to be able to have access to dorks in order to fully take advantage of the colors you're in now things like urza uh with uh you know polytide or with you can use uh yeah polymorph your your construct into tide spout um same with proteus staff and proteus staff you know fairly accessible with all of your artifact tutors that you know that that kind of makes sense. You forgo uh, some of the great blue cards, and you know your spell seekers and your tutoring effects on your what is like trinket mage and all those. Uh, I mean, you also yeah, that, you also miss like uh, spell skite and a couple of other like cards that you yeah, want to be you playing. Yeah, you miss some but, stuff, yeah. but it does not hurt nearly as bad as playing to cut those green cards and yeah. not playing dorks. <laughs> exactly. Um. Yeah, I think that's pretty clear what the the cost for is uh is with those. Maybe also the fact that their mana cost um you know, Proteus staff, polymorph divergent. Not like if they, if they were much cheaper uh and they found something that was like an instant speed win con. Oh dude, um, okay. Here's the, here's the meta. That, here's the meta. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> Convince okay. everybody in your playgroup to try out six person EDH games. <laughs> and you're just like, oh look, look okay. it couldn't be yeah. that bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit longer, but you know, we'll, we'll test it out, whatever. And then you play Divergent as a two mana Winston Speed win. <laughs> wow, and it's like still not even as good as Flash. <laughs> yeah, still Hell. not as good as Flash. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean it's still it's still good <laughs> it's, it's probably better yeah, than so flash trademark <laughs> if, if they print if they print more cards in this sort of vein that are cheaper or they print better you know payoffs that you can get into then maybe maybe they'll start uh seeing more play um but until then you know the cheapest effect being oath of druids requiring a full turn cycle to go around and not get removed and also giving your opponents a chance to flip into creatures <laughs> oh god just imagine imagine they print something that's worth uh building an oath of druids deck around to and then becomes like a reasonably high tier deck the mirror matches like oh god <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> how sus- how suspicious would you be though if someone started pushing really hard for six player games <laughs> <laughs> you, have to, you have to do it in Ooh. like you have to do it in a way that doesn't arouse suspicion somehow <laughs> 
Yeah, so so that's oh, I just really am sick of three D H. I guess we'll yeah, just guys. Can we just, can we just, can we just combine on. these three person pods? <laughs> let's move on to the final cards on our list, uh, and those that all in our show notes is just listed as Lich, Lich, which and is Lich. also so, missing missing <laughs> Lich, but you know. The, okay. The, the fourth lich is a different. One. The fourth, not the same. but the Go, fourth lich is the sickest lich. Someone explain what's going on here. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the reins on this one. So of course we're talking about lich, nefarious lich, and lich's mastery, and no other. <laughs> and lich's and, mirror. Thank uh, you very much. You know the, the the cost on these cards is definitely uh, comes from all aspects of them. So they um, lich and nefarious lich both cost four black mana. Uh, and Lich's Mastery uh, is three black man and three, so like actually getting actually casting these spells is is challenging. Um, and if um, things go wrong, uh, in pretty much all circumstances, you lose the game or you have no more permanents. Uh, which is you know, <laughs> it, which yeah. which which you know, Doomsday players are certainly familiar with the you know the high stakes you know the high stakes uh, combo. But um, Lich the the cards. Um, themselves all share this one the same ability which is when you gain life you draw that many cards and uh gaining life is probably the most cheaply costed sorry gaining life is probably the most cheaply costed ability or just yeah i guess ability in bulk that you'll find in magic so translating those uh cards into those yeah those cards into many more cards is certainly appealing Turns uh, your healing salve into ancestral recall. Yeah, <laughs> yes it does. Dude. Uh, Good old classic. Uh, pull pull some like neo brand Grishel brand shenanigans. Get your uh, your nourishing shoal exile a uh, uh, a talkthon. Oh yeah, and just keep it going. Did, did any of you? Did any of you ever play uh, Rainbow Lich? No. In standard. In standard, yeah, I did. That was a sweet deck. It was definitely <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, Matt outlined it pretty clearly. Like, there's clearly potential here, but as it stands, it, it's it hasn't. You know, I mean, Doomsday has already fallen out of favor, and Doomsday is much easier to set up and get payoff from than the Lich cards. So, it would take quite a lot for the Liches to become, uh, you know, worth playing, but. The strength in, in just the raw power of the card is clearly there. So probably a good commander is, is what's what's missing. Dude, it needs an you know, Oath maybe... of Druids for enchantments. That's what it needs. <laughs> <laughs> needs a uh, a commander that is just uh just nourishing need... shoal on a stick. <laughs> it just needs it just... Zer but four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so that wraps it up for our main topic of the show. And we're going to be moving on to everyone's favorite segment Gut Check. Gut Check. <laughs> what we've all been God, waiting God. for. Gut Check. check. <laughs> Raise your hand okay. if you fast forwarded. <laughs> so this week's Gut Check is going to be how many CEDH decks. Proxies or no proxies? Do you have built-in paper? And then follow up to that: What is the cap on how many decks you would have built at the same time before you disassemble one to build another? Yeah, all right, all right, I've got my answer. <laughs> Morgan, you got yours? No, I'm just gonna count. Yeah, this is why I thought this would be an interesting question. All right, and as a second gut check, okay, uh, how many color printers do you have in your household? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, does your work charge you for yeah, color How many yeah. printers do you have? They don't, have? and they have a very nice printer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's 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 start off. Reed, what about you? How many CDH decks do you own? Proxies and no proxies. Current. So, do you have any fully unproxied decks? Uh, I have no fully unproxied decks because um, I'm poor. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. I, have, student you, student budget, all that good stuff. Um, what's what's the most? It, uh, like what's the ratio? Do you know, like percentage decks? complete. Oh, uh, percentage. Um, I think I'm at twenty proxies in my main deck right now. Yeah. Okay. Actually, nice. no. Actually, I any... think it's less than that because I think 
Oracle being printed meant I got to put more real cards into my deck. Um, yeah. Nice. Um, and then you have you have so that one deck that's eighty yes, percent complete, and, and then, then everything else is is that it? Fully proxied. Um, I have one other deck sleeved up right now, and I have a lot of decks sitting outside of sleeves on tables. <laughs> Okay, just just to clarify, I'm counting only okay, sleeve two. decks. Like you could two. grab this deck and without making like a ton of swap arounds or anything. No, no, like I, that, I mean, no, no, no. like uh, I mean, there are decks that I could pick up and play, just they wouldn't have sleeves on them. <laughs> they're they're okay. they're sitting well, I, basically fully constructed, <laughs> just not in sleeves. Okay, and then what's the cap on how many decks you'd have built in paper at the same uh, time before you start disassembling how many them? Deck boxes do I have? Um, <laughs> probably what like five right now. Potentially more if I shuffle some cards around. <laughs> so yeah, you'd go you'd what? go up to five. What? Yeah. Wait. So are you saying you could build five CDH decks right now in paper? What? No. Or did he, I miss he proxy proxy them? <laughs> Oh, I thought. Oh my no, gosh! For no, some no, reason, no. I thought what you meant was an actual card, like an actual no, card. No, no. no, it's more like it's how, you, how much paper like, are you willing to have you sitting print, around oh, in okay, sleeves yeah. and boxes? I, was like, I could probably do max two <laughs> oh. fully featured decks. Yeah, no, I could actual yeah. cardboard. I, I, yeah, I so just, could, just I'll, I'll answer. I think next I could deck to, box uh, five decks right now without shuffling cards around, but I could probably get up to like ten in deck boxes if I wanted to. Okay, so I have uh, one fully unproxy deck, uh, and so yeah, just completed in paper, and that's Gitrog. And then I have two other decks that are in you know semi state between proxies and uh, real cards because they share you know fetch land and stuff between decks and tutors, overlapping colors. Uh, so that's Anafenza and Zer. So I have three completed CDH decks built in paper. Um, including proxies and then the cap on how many decks that have built at the same time would be four because i use uh uh the ultra pro boulders and then like the archive which holds four boulders for 100 card decks so <laughs> it would be just non-aesthetic to exceed that <laughs> amount <laughs> so uh i would max build four but also like I, I think that's a good number for cdh decks for me personally uh, All right. Matt, do you want to go next before yeah. we go? I'm a quick one. Morgan. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I have um, one almost fully unproxy deck. I'm just missing a Gaia's Cradle, uh, but I'm not even sure if I'm going to pull the trigger on that one. Uh, and I have no other proxy decks. <laughs> I don't really. I, I like to keep it simple. Um, I I can store three decks in my. Uh, pathetic little messenger bag that conveniently fits just my laptop and pretty much nothing else except for three decks. <laughs> <laughs> so I have nice. a capacity of three and, and I certainly have plenty of spare sleeves to do that. And I do actually have access to a printer as much as I hate to use it to print magic cards. <laughs> so, so you would, you, you would cap it at three. you not, you would, because it seems like your cap is at one, though, right? Because you you only ever really build one deck and then have uh, it. Yeah, well, you just kind of deconstructed then reconstruct a different I've, deck. I've been thinking about having two decks, at the very least, and you know maybe that's a slippery slope to three decks. I don't know how it works. So <laughs> yeah. you, you guys can you guys can tell me. Uh, Dude, the first the first hit is free, man. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm just afraid Morgan, someone's gonna catch you? me at work printing magic you cards. Save the most outrageous for last. Uh, so I have. Uh, Razakat's more or less fully built in paper. I own all the cards for it. I just have to put in, like, my life death that's somewhere in a box that I have to pull out. Um, and then, uh, I have proxied out, I have Kess, Sushi Hulk, Hullen, the first sliver, Muldrotha, um, Kikar, Korvold, and then a Kenrith deck that I decided to stop playing when I built Sushi Hulk. Uh, and then I have Vanifar in two piles because I was trying to paper it out for oh a total of... I mean, I'm forgetting something. Oh, and Inella <laughs> proxied uh, for a total of 12. Um, and I could build most of... Like, I could build 
Most of those I could build completely with cards I own if I pulled them out of other decks. Um, some of them I'm still missing, like a couple random uh, meme cards that I haven't bought yet. So much like me, you could build like pretty much any of your decks to be fully unproxied, but because you want to have multiple decks ready, you just yeah. keep the proxies. I, like, and I'd be the stuff I'd be missing from decks is not like oh, I don't have the dual land or the whatever. It'd be like, oh, I'm missing, like, that random tech creature in Vanifar. Like, oh, I don't own, like, a Sakashima or whatever. As what, opposed to, you like, tell me you don't own a foil Sakashima? God. I do not, no. <laughs> Which um, is unreasonably expensive. <laughs> and my cap is... Uh, the limit does not exist. <laughs> no, um, I think I'm... I wouldn't go much above where I am now because I don't even carry around all my decks at once as is. Like I basically, I think sometimes I've taken nine because I have eight that kind of live in my two archives and then I'll want to bring something else. So I'll throw it in another box, but uh, that's kind of, I would never carry around more than that. So, and like, I just can't play that many decks. So fair enough. And some of the ones I'm counting here are ones that I don't play. I just haven't disassembled yet because it's easier to buy more sleeves and print out new stuff than unsleeve and resleeve. Yeah. Okay. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. If you guys would like to reach out to us with any questions, comments, or concerns, you can contact us on Twitter at Into the North Pod via our email, Into the North Podcast at gmail.com, or on our Discord server, the invite link for which can be found in the description for this episode. An extra special thanks to all of our patrons who help cover the expenses for our show and allow us to work towards improving the quality of the podcast if you too would like to become a patreon we are patreon.com slash into the north podcast thank you as always to the band vox cadre for our lovely podcast music to nate slover for our equally lovely podcast logo and to our long suffering podcast editor roadkill next episode will be out in two weeks until then see ya bye bye have a good